So in this talk, I'm going to be talking about uh, something called Bluetooth Low Energy. That's kind of like the power horse behind iBeacon. I'm going to be talking about you know, what are iBeacons in general. And um, then I'm going to be talking about different applications and stuff um, around iBeacon. I'm not going to get so much into the technical side of like, how you would actually code this stuff. So um, what is Bluetooth Low Energy? Bluetooth Low Energy is a new protocol um, for Bluetooth, and it's basically a way of devices to trans transmit data in a really low energy way, uh, taking very, very little battery life um, and transmitting meaningful amounts of data. So optimized for small bursts of data, uh, really great battery life, and it's ideal for all sorts of different types of sensors, wearables, Internet of Things type things that we've been hearing about today, and uh, iBeacons. So uh, this technology is behind a lot of the, those Pebble watches that you're wearing, um, all sorts of different wearables that were shown off at E3 this year. A lot of them are powered by Bluetooth low energy. So here, here's an iBeacon. Let me, let me show you one. Um, I'm going to kind of pass these things around. So I got a bunch of them here. If you can just kind of pass some of those that way. Got some iBeacons. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, just feel free to pass them around. They look different. They're made by a bunch of different manufacturers. But you're getting kind of the, the idea of what the size is for one of these things. They're just really, really small little kind of pod things. Yeah. So I'll get a little bit more into this, but beacons can't send much for data. Um, basically, what an iBeacon does is it just sits there and says, hey, I'm here. That's all it does. And it sends out a little serial number, which is kind of the name of this individual iBeacon. So it just that's all it does. It all, all it's doing is just transmitting this serial number. The really cool thing about it is when your phone detects that serial number, you can trigger all sorts of different events inside of an app. To the end user, it feels like magic, but on the developer side of things, it's really not that complex. There isn't a bunch of data stored on this thing. So you get really, really cheap hardware matched with cool software that makes this really magical experience for the end user. So if you opened up an iBeacon, looked inside of it, uh, you can see you know, there's a small chip inside of it and a small coin battery. And like I said, this thing is just sitting there and it's always on and it's just saying, hey, I'm here and here's my ridiculously long serial number. So iBeacons are made by a bunch of different manufacturers and they come in all sorts of different shapes, sizes, battery lives. Here are what some of them look like. There's some that, I'm, that I passed around that they're kind of like squishy and they have a sticky pad on the bottom. Those ones are made by a company called Estimote that came out of Y Combinator. Uh, they're the, the other ones that I'm passing around are made by Qualcomm and they're they're just different. They're, they're made by all sorts of different manufacturers, and they kind of have their pros and cons. So I put together this little table here of who are kind of the biggest names in iBeacon. See, Gimbal, which is made by Qualcomm, Estimote, Roximity, and Red Bear. All you need to know here is these things range in battery life from like two months to two years. They cost between like $2 and $100 a piece. And um, some of them have software kits attached to them that make it really easy for developers to build cool apps with these things. Others don't. I don't think that there's any one right iBeacon. It's there's a right iBeacon for a specific situation. So as a developer that builds iBeacon apps, I can't say, you know, you should always go with Estimote or you should always go with Gimbal. It really depends on what situation you're in, and we'll pick the best one from there. So like I said, as soon as your phone is able to detect that signal, detect that little serial number, 
you can trigger different events inside of the app. The really cool part about this technology, might even be bigger than the little pods themselves, is your phone can act as an iBeacon as well. So your phone has a little Bluetooth antenna inside of it, and you, inside your app, you can tell it to act as an iBeacon. With that, you can be walking around with your app on, and when you get near other people, you can trigger events on their phones. So, I mean, you could play cool games like Tag Your It, King of the Hill. Uh, the games part is really cool. And I'll, I'll go into a case study on a, a cool app that kind of uses this technology. Um, imagine if you were going to a restaurant and there's a big line for, um, to actually get a table and you want to check in. Well, as soon as your phone gets near that iPad that's used as the point of sale system, you can check in right there through an app. You don't actually have to go up to the hostess and you know, have her write down your name. You can just do this all inside of an app because that tablet is talking with your phone using the iBeacon protocol. Cool thing is, tons of devices are iBeacon capable today, over 250 million devices. And it's a lot of the older devices, surprisingly. Uh, if you're on the Android platform, it's mostly the newer devices, but if you're on iOS, then I think it's everything after the 4S. Or it, it might be the 4 or the 4S, I'd have to look it up again, but it's 250 million devices. Meaning, if you wanna build a custom iBeacon app, you have this huge market that you can deploy to overnight. And all the new phones on both platforms are adopting this protocol, so it's not kind of like a fly-by-night type of technology.